Adetunji, welcome to studio. Thank you. Touching Thank you. on the growing economy, obviously the rebasing comes on the back of massive growth over the last couple of years. One criticism has been that that growth hasn't filtered down to the lowest of the low in the Nigerian economy. Yes, um, look, I have always said that a government must show that it cares, right? Um, I know that the current government, they have a transformation agenda, they're trying to do social inclusion. We have a target in terms of the Millennium Development Goals for 2015, in terms of maternal mortality and how many girls should be in school and so on. And I think this government, they're aware of those sensibilities. In fact, we have a minister, I believe, or special advisor on the MDG who is a female, and also we believe that with the government's recent power sector reform that brought in about $3 billion, and I think also there's going to be a lot of investment in that sector because this is now in private hands, so they've unbundled the PCHN, which, used to, which is called the Power Holding Corporation of Nigeria. So there's going to be more money going into power because if you remember, even with regards to telecoms, in 2001, Nigeria, we had only 400,000 lines for 150 million people. Today, we have 113 million subscribers. So I believe the power thing, it takes time because there are transmission issues. There's the issue of gas supplies. And also, it's a very, very capital-intensive project. So I believe that things will change in terms of making sure that we reduce the gap between the rich and the poor. And I think that's why you see that most of the policies now are more pro-poor rather than pro the elites. You touch on power and, and gas, but one thing that we've seen across Africa where you've got resource-dependent economies is a shift away. What are some of the industries where we'll see Nigeria's focus away from resources? I think if you look at uh, the soft side first, I mean, Nollywood, 40 movies a week, $250 million annual every year. And, you know, the government has even spotted that and said, look, if we can tighten the intellectual property and we can also improve the quality and give these guys access to finance, they'll make better movies. Of course, you've seen the music scene with Debange and all these guys, uh, you know, they've taken over. People are listening to Nigerian music all over Africa and even around the world. If you look at agriculture, the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Adeshina, was Forbes Person of the Year in 2013. They've registered 10 million farmers now. We're looking at pineapples. We're looking at cassava. SAB Miller is in there with $100 million to take cassava, convert cassava into beer. And also the Chinese are taking those cassava chips. There's a deal that is on the table now for $800 million, 3.2 um, million or metric tons of uh, cassava that the Chinese are going to be taking from us. And I believe also in terms of tomatoes, Dangote is looking at... Uh, Sugar cane, it was to set up sugar uh, for about $2.3 billion in the north in a state called Kebi State. And he also wants to set up rice fields. We're also producing about 1 million metric tons of rice now. So we have less dependency on imports because last year we spent about $5 billion on importing rice. So we're doing a lot. The government is actually doing a lot to move away from oil dependency. In fact, oil only contributes. 14% to our GDP, even though it's about 90% of our foreign exchange earnings. So there's a, there's a diversification plan uh, under the able uh, stewardship of, uh, or leadership of uh, Dr. Okonje Uyala, who is the coordinating minister for the economy. And she's, well, uh, she's got a good track record. She tried to get the World, World Bank job, but she was pipped at the post by Kim. So we believe that Nigeria is on track. So just watch the space. As with all plans, I mean, there are obviously some hurdles to be overcome. What do you perceive as the major challenges and risks? Well, look, I think that doing business in Nigeria is very difficult. I mean, I've always believed that a country the size of Nigeria, that they're not really taking full advantage of their diaspora. I mean, we understand the country and we also understand our host countries very well. So who better to be ambassadors for Nigeria? Even on this issue of insecurity, for example, many people who should be speaking are not speaking. And you know, one of the things why we set up the Guild of Nigerian Professionals is to say that when there's anything negative about Nigeria, we will speak. When there's anything positive about Nigeria, we will speak. What we will never allow anymore is to find that when people are discussing Nigeria, we see an expert in London or an expert in the U.S. talking about our own country in terms that are far remote and highly unnecessary because we have 17 million people in diaspora. We should be able to add value. And trade? 
have we seen a lot of trade being facilitated by the Nigerian diaspora? Abs absolutely. I think, look, one thing you must give to Nigerians is the Nigerians are generally restless. So they will always want to do something. There are people who are into various businesses. I think that if you look at various companies in South Africa, there'll be a Nigerian behind the entry of those con companies into Nigeria, whether it's MTN, whether it's ShopRite, there'll be a Nigerian. They might not be visible, they might not be sitting on the board, but what we are hoping is that as the guild, that we can begin to influence, that we see maybe the first Nigerian JSC CEO, because we believe that, for example, if MTN Nigeria is contributing 35% to the group income, we would like to see maybe even the gentleman who is now MTN CEO in Nigeria, because this is the first time we've had an MTN CEO, even in Nigeria, who is a Nigerian, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ipoki. So we would like to see maybe Ipoki one day follow the same route that Sifiso Dabengwa has followed. Sifiso was MTN CEO in Nigeria. He came to head MTN here under Putuman Leko. He's now the group CEO. So we'd like to see more of that. Certainly an interesting prospect, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Kosi. Thank you.